Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today I wanna to go over a bunch of books that I read in 2020 that I really enjoyed and would really recommend to basically everyone. Now, I don't want this video to be super long or anything. I know that you have things to do. <laughs> you wanna get some recommendations, see why I recommend them, and kind of move on and see if that's a thing you wanna to go to Audible or Amazon or your local bookstore and pick up. Uh, if you have some time to read this holiday season, some of these are, I think are gonna be great picks. If you have a New Year's resolution maybe to do some more reading, I think so there's gonna be some stuff on here that can really kickstart that for you uh, going into 2021. So let's take a look at them right now. So I'm gonna start with the productivity books because that's most on brand for this channel. Uh, the number one productivity book I read this year is a book called Atomic Habits. Uh, if there's one productivity book that you want to read from like the past year or two, I think this is it. I love this book. I think it's really well written. It really, as kind of the name implies, focuses on helping you figure out small things you can do to make big differences uh, and kind of uses great examples of how that has worked for the author, for other people. It's really well written, really well uh, defended, and I think that uh, it has some really nice ideas beyond just the small habits, uh, turn into big habits sort of thing. Uh, it's really well written. I really recommend this book. Another good productivity related book I read this year is called Where Good Ideas Come From. Uh, I made a video actually about one of the ideas in this book uh, called The Adjacent Possible, uh, which is about like where good ideas come from, where um, why we have like simultaneously invention where multiple people unrelated to each other, unaware of each other's like projects invent the same thing over the course of history. It's a really interesting book and I think that it's a really good one to look at if you're trying to like, if one of your goals is to figure out how to come up with new ideas, come up with innovative ideas uh, that kind of move you, your company, whatever forward. I think it's a really good read. The last book in the productivity section is a book called Company of One. Uh, this is a really good book about basically not getting too big unless you have to, unless you have a good reason to. And so it's directed largely at entrepreneurs, people who are kind of going solo, trying to do their own thing, and how that a company of one is a really good thing and you don't have to always chase infinite growth and everything. It's a really nice book for those sorts of people, but it's also good. It has some stuff about how you can be a company of one inside a bigger company. So if you work as a bigger in a bigger company, maybe you're kind of feel like a cog in the machine sometimes. It has some really good suggestions as to how you can innovate in your space and can help your company be just better overall and not be infinitely chasing more, more growth, more money, more users, more everything, and how you can do things better. And that may be better for everyone in the long run. The next couple books are more business focused. Uh, the first one is a book called Creative Selection. This is written by someone who worked at Apple and led up uh, work around the original version of Safari and the iPhone keyboard. And it kind of walks you through how those products came to be and is really inspiring. Like it's incredibly interesting to see like how something such as Safari, which is today considered to be one of the fastest browsers, probably the fastest browser, how from the very beginning, that's what they were focused on. Uh, and things like the iPhone keyboard, which seems so inevitable and seems like it hasn't changed that much in the past like 15 years. That's because it was so brilliantly made the first time. And they kind of walked through the creative process of how it came to be, what other ideas there were, what was rejected, what like this original idea was and how it was molded into what it turned into. There's a lot of stuff going on in this book and it's really, really fantastic. I think if, if Atomic Habits is my productivity book of the year, Creative Selection might be my favorite just book of the year. It didn't come out this year, but I read it again. I read it for the second time actually this year and I just, I loved it even more the second time. Then there's a book called The Infinite Game. Uh, this is, I can't really say that much about it, but it's basically a way to look at the company you work for, the company you're building. If you have like power at your company in determining what you build, what you uh, focus on as a company, what your mission statement is, I think it's a really good thing to read. Uh, it, it basically is about figuring out if you're a company who is has finite goals, is all about things that could go away <laughs> more easily, or if you're an infinite company playing a different game uh, who's able to kind of change with the times. Um, an example they gave is kind of like a railroad company who went out of business once the railroads became less important uh, because that's what they did, they did railroads, uh, versus another company who was in the in the personal transport business. And so when things changed, when priorities changed, when like the amount of things uh, out there, like between trains, planes, automobiles, I guess, <laughs> shifted over time, they were able to adapt with the times because they were in transportation. They weren't just in trains. Um, that's a simplified example, maybe not 100% accurate to what it is in the book, but that's the kind of idea. 
And then the one fiction book on the list, I'm sorry if you like fiction and this list isn't uh, giving you everything that you want. Uh, the one fiction book I read this year uh, that I really enjoyed is called This Is How You Lose the Time War. It's hard to explain, so I'm not really gonna try, but it's technically a love story and kind of the sci-fi universe, a uh, love story that obviously can't happen. Um, it's more about the feelings it makes you experience while you read it rather than the intricate plot or anything. It's a really fantastic book and super short. I read it in one set, one sitting. Um, highly, highly recommend this book. Then we get into some more political books. Um, so I may lose some of you here, but uh, I read three books kind of around social issues that I think are really important this year. Uh, the first one is a book by Ezra Klein called Why We're Polarized. And this is, I know Ezra Klein is very um, left-leaning, has a lot of opinions um, about that, and that may turn you off. I think this is a very good book um, in terms of not just like being a partisan look at politics and being like the left is always right and the right is always wrong. That's not what this is. Uh, it's really a look at kind of why we feel so damn polarized in 2020 in America and kind of how that came to be over the course of the past couple decades, centuries, how it's looked in the past, whether we're more polarized today than we ever have been. It looks at these in a really clever way, a really fun way. Um, fun, I guess, <laughs> way, uh, but it is a very good read. I highly recommend this, even if you don't always agree with Ezra Klein's politics. Then one of the most recent books I read is a book called Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents. Uh, this is a brilliant book. This is an absolutely brilliant book, and I cannot recommend it enough. It is a look at racism in America, the history of it, kind of how things have progressed, um, and it recasts, I guess, if you will, uh, the conversation not as an issue of some people are racist and some people aren't. It looks at racism in America as a caste system. It is very well defended. It's very well written. Um, there's some haunting things in here looking at kind of 1930s Germany and then looking at the U.S. as a, an example of how they could um, kind of have policies that are not, that look okay and make them not look like monsters. Um, it's a haunting book, uh, but it's really, really worth your time. If this is a topic that has probably been on your mind uh, in 2020, um, I highly recommend this book. Then I read a book called The Color of Law. This is a book about law in America at the federal level, the state level, the local level that is explicitly racist, <laughs> that is explicitly um, favoring certain ethnicities over others. And I think it's a fantastic book, especially if your position uh, when you hear the like phrase systemic racism is to say, that's not a thing um, that hasn't been legal since the 60s. I highly recommend reading this book and kind of understanding what systemic racism means, um, how it has impacted not only when um, certain laws were on the books, but how it impacted people down the line, um, and how there are still things on the books that are just not great, not good. Um, so highly recommend reading this book as well. And then the final book on the list is The Happiness Hypothesis. You've probably seen this one on several uh, channels similar to this, but I finally broke down and read it. I was really surprised by this. I thought I was going to be just kind of like, mm, not really into this. I was kind of done with productivity books at the end of the year, but I just finished it. Um, it is more of a psychology book than a productivity book. It's really more about understanding how humans work. <laughs> and I think that it left me feeling better about myself, better about society, better about just my fellow man <laughs> than other books uh, do. Like some of the books I just mentioned, especially um, Cast and The Color of Law, are really like heavy books and hard reads and like make you like just look in the mirror um, and feel not great about things. The Happiness Hypothesis is kind of the opposite. It acknowledges tons of problems. There's tons of things going on that are bad, um, but it doesn't have kind of a bad view of humanity or anything. Um, so I think it's a really good book. And that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully there are a few books on here that you will uh, feel compelled to check out. Um, I'll try to put links all in the description and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.